As you um, mentioned in your introduction, my name is Dr. Heather Fowler, and I'm the Director of Producer and Public Health at the National Pork Board. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart and one that I cover um, in my role as a Director of Producer and Public Health at the Pork Board. That's One Health and Antimicrobial Stewardship in the Swine Industry. Now, a little background on myself. I'm a public health veterinarian by training. I also have a PhD in worker safety and health with an emphasis on those individu individuals that care for and or treat animals, so our veterinarians and our producers. And I'm a true One Health champion. So I bring all of that background with me to my role as the director, producer, and public health at the National Pork Board. So it should make sense that I work in a One Health way. Now, I really can't see the chat. Let me see if I can bring that up. Um, who all is familiar with One Health? You said yes or no. Are you familiar with One Health, the concept of One Health? Have you heard of it before? So some no's, some yeses coming in. So for those that are not familiar with One Health, and we tried to display this graphically, so I'm seeing an equal number of yeses and nos. Um, when we talk about the One Health approach, we're really referring to how human health, animal health, and environmental health are all intertwined. And for those types of issues where those three areas are overlapped, you really need to take a holistic approach. So imagine if the environment was being impacted by something in human health, and you only looked at human health and ignored the human, the, the environmental health um, components, think of Silent Spring, um, and how when we were trying to really protect human health by killing mosquitoes, we were having an impact on those animals that lived in that environment. So again, if we're only taking a siloed approach, we're not realizing the impacts we can have in those other spaces and how they're all connected. So again, really need to take um, a holistic approach to areas that include those three spaces. Now, what I love about the approach is scalable. You can do it on your farms. Um, we can, we're applying it at the local, regional, global level even, especially as it relates to antimicrobial resistance. So when I talk to pig farmers, I remind them that, hey, you're actually doing one health every single day on your farm because you are raising animals in an ethical and responsible way that you prioritize animal well-being. We're looking at food safety and public health from a consumer perspective, but we're also conscious of being environmental stewards. So for those that are not familiar with this topic, hopefully you at least walk away with that piece of what One Health is. I can tell you that from the swine industry perspective, um, it's again, it's really ingrained within the industry. And I would argue that it's only honestly ingrained across the barnyard with other animal production systems. For us in the industry though, in the swine industry, excuse me, we're grounded in a set of we care ethical principles, which I will show you here in a second. And those principles really drive um, the practices that we implement and how we teach on those principles. From there, we validate that these principles are being implemented on the farm. And then we use that to share our story out with our end consumer to help earn public trust. Now, if you notice, these are chains and they're linked. Um, but you also see this kind of circular shape here amongst each and every step. And that's because it's an iterative process and things downstream definitely impact those upstream. Now I can tell you that we revisit our principles to see if they're still relevant, if we need to expand or contract at all. And then we make sure that we're updating our practices, even if there isn't a change to our principles, right? Things will change based on the ongoing science. And then that translates again down the proof and public trust. We all know to maintain a relationship, we need to maintain that connection and be continuously communicating. So again, when it comes to the industry, we're trying to earn public trust and we implement it through those steps. Now, I mentioned the We Care Ethical Principles. There are six of them. You can see them here displayed on the slide. And for me as a One Health champion, someone that started at the pork board in 2017, an entire decade, just about after the One Health, or excuse me, the We Care Ethical Principles were implemented, I was excited to see this, right? We talked about human health, animal health, and environmental health. I've kind of already hinted at the different aspects there, but you see animal health represented in well-being. We see public health represented in food safety, public health, our people, which at one point was 
just worker safety, but we saw the need to expand that principle with an update. Community, so being good stewards and good community members, and then the environment. So it all, for me, at least maps back to that One Health approach. And again, I think we can definitely see examples of these in other animal industries. Now in the swine industry, I mentioned the One Health approach being scalable, right? So not necessarily global in this case, when within the industry, we focus on what we control and that's people, pigs and our impact on the planet. Again, working to be good stewards in all of those three spaces. Now, in terms of the practices, we have one of our main practices that drives home those um, One Health principles is the um, PQA plus program or Port Quality Assurance plus program. As you can see on the slide here, we got really good buy-in with 85% of our pigs marketed in the US having a PQA plus site assessment. And that's because the program is broken into two parts or two steps. There's an individual tra training certification piece and there's a site assessment piece. Now you can imagine the individual training means that everyone that works on barns for master students that want to complete a practicum experience with me or interns, anyone and everyone in the swine industry is trained in those, those um, we care ethical principles through the PQA plus program and that individual certification. Now that certification expires after three years, to which point you need to renew. We're continuing working on building up that curriculum to keep that information fresh. So you're not just clicking through the modules, you're learning something new based on that new science. The other part is the site assessment. So that means um, after we train the individuals, are they implementing those steps? That site assessment is often done by someone close to the farm, maybe a farm manager or a veterinarian, so first or second party. And it's really educational. Again, it's meant to drive home those principles and the we care ethical principles that are are taught in the PQA plus program. And then from there, um, we know that we can, again, we validate through other steps such as our common swine industry audit, and we can share that information of all the steps we're working on to do what's right for people, pigs and planet. Beyond that, there are a number of other activities that we implement as it relates to One Health stewardship. I should actually go back as it relates to PQA+. Again, we teach on all of those we care ethical principles, but we teach it in an integrated way. So thinking back to people, pigs, and planet, I mentioned the One Health approach. Um, those three areas are so intertwined that you can't really separate them. So you need to take that holistic approach. And we do that with PQA+. Now, if you have a hard copy manual, I admit, individual chapters go over those we care ethical principles, but we need that in order to take a deep dive. But we also make through, sure during our um, in-person trainings and on our online module-based trainings that we integrate that. The example I can give you is um, transporting hogs. So if an individual is preparing to send animals off to market, there's a couple of things they need to think of. They need to think of animal welfare. How do I handle and move these animals in a safe and effective way? that protects their welfare? How do I, as a worker, make sure that I'm protecting myself when interacting with these animals? And then how do I protect public health by confirming records in terms of um, animal treatment, especially with antibiotics and other health products to make sure that we've followed the appropriate recording and withdrawal times when sending those animals off to um, processing. So again, we really try to teach in an integrative way. Now, beyond the PQA Plus program, which again is the flagship program within the swine industry that teaches on those principles, implements those practices that we can then validate through proof points and share back with our customers and consumers, we have other activities that are specific to antimicrobial resistance and stewardship. I should point out that along those other principles, we have specific programming there, but today we're talking about AMR and AMS. In general, Park Board takes a leading role in these conversations, and that means engaging with partners, our federal partners, NGOs, academic institutions. We fund research in this space. We partner with others to fund research in this space, and we're working, for instance, with this type of presentation to help share that story of what we're trying to accomplish within the swine industry and the work that we're already doing. You can imagine if we're doing great work, but we don't tell anyone, 
people could come to their own conclusion as to what's really going on. So we really wanna make sure that we're sharing that story. And then we also create and disseminate materials to various audiences, whether it's our producers, consumers, et cetera, et cetera, around those activities and say if there's an update in practices, making sure that's getting back to our producers. We are also currently working on improving how we collect antimicrobial use data on the farm. And I should point out that our producers are already tracking their use. There's a lot of pen and paper use, there's electronic records that are being used, and there's all different ways that our producers, again, are tracking that information, recording and tracking that information. But we wanna make sure in the next few years that our producers are tracking their data and I'm gonna use a buzzword here, an actionable way. Are they collecting it in a way where they can thumb through it very quickly, figure out what the trends are, maybe identify management issues, maybe the barn was too cold one day um, and then the pigs broke with diarrhea or some other health concern. Are, are we working to really help those records change how we practice? Can we try different management practices around disease and see if they're effective based on our treatment records? Again, we want those records to be con con ah, collected in a way that can help um, have, be value added to our already existing practices. And it can also help from a reporting perspective, right, um, as well as a stewardship perspective. If producers are required to, to report out information, are they collecting in a way that they can readily do that? And also, again, from a stewardship perspective and sharing that story of saying, well, over these past years, you know, we've had a couple blips, but those were tied to um, a specific outbreak. We identified the issue from a biosecurity perspective or an animal management perspective and are working to address that. Another thing we're also working through as we identify new ways to help our producers track their antibiotics is looking at new technologies. I mentioned electronic records, which many of our producers are already using, but are there other tools that they can use um, that can even streamline the process even more? Or for those that are not using electronic records that they can explore. And so again, we continue to try to make strides in this space around antimicrobial use and stewardship. We continue to be involved in that conversation. And we recognize that we need to apply the One Health approach when it comes to antimicrobial stewardship. So I'm really happy to be here today presenting you from a swine industry perspective, but I will listen intently to the other speakers and hopefully take away some key nuggets there that I can share back with our producers, because that is really what working in a One Health way is all about, right? As cheesy as it sounds, we're all in this together as it relates to antimicrobial use, resistance, and stewardship. We need to work across those different aspects of the One Health framework, learn from each other, and grow together.